Handling or Preventing Errors in Python. Look Before You Leap versus Easier to Ask Forgiveness Than Permission. My name's Joseph, and I'll be your instructor for this video course. This course is about errors in exceptional situations and how you can either prevent or handle them. Understanding different programming styles is essential in your journey as a Python developer. No two situations will be identical, and the best developers make sure they have a variety of techniques at the ready to tackle whatever difficulties arise. As a programmer, I'm sure you're familiar with errors. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, you'll find that errors are always with you. In this course, we'll talk about two of the major strategies for handling errors in Python. The first is look before you leap, also called LBYL. This style seeks to prevent errors before they happen and typically uses conditional logic. The second is it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission, also called EAFP. This style handles errors after they occur and uses Python-specific try-accept syntax. By the end of this course, you'll learn the importance of errors in error handling, how to write code in either an EAFP or an LBYL style, the advantages and disadvantages of each style, as well as how to pick the right style for any situation. So if you're ready to take your understanding of errors to the next level, I'll see you in the following lesson. So at this point, you're probably wondering what exactly is LBYL or look before you leap. Just as it sounds, you're looking ahead, trying to predict where an error might occur in your code and then taking specific actions to avoid that happening. If you're like me, constantly imagining worst case scenarios, then this probably comes pretty naturally to you. This is also the classic approach because earlier on in programming, Error catching using something like Python's try and accept wasn't even an option, and this was the way to make sure that your code ran safely. This is typically applied using conditional logic, such as an if-else block in Python, to avoid the errors. It also requires that you're able to correctly identify the inputs that may lead to errors down the road. Now let's look at an example with Python code. So you'll be working in the Python REPL for this. It takes only a few lines of code to see how the LBYL style can be useful for a very common situation, accessing a missing key in a dictionary. As you probably know, if you try to access a key in a dictionary that doesn't exist in that dictionary, Python will raise a key error. So to avoid that, first, you'll want to create a dictionary. You can use any name you want here, I'm going to use Joseph because I'm biased towards that name. Now that you've got your dictionary, just imagine that you got up, went for a walk, went to see a movie, came back and decided to continue writing your code. How was the movie? I hope it was good. Anyway, maybe you've forgotten exactly what was defined in the dictionary that you wrote ages ago. And you kind of remember there being an email key and you want to store that in a variable. Oops, I guess you were too busy being swept away by the silver screen. And now we have a key error because, of course, email is not contained in the dictionary. So how can you use LBYL to look before leaping in this case? You've got it. You're going to use an if-else block. So what's happening in this code? First, if we'll check the condition whether the string email is one of the keys in the data dict. If that check returns false, we will skip on to the else, where the print function is going to output a message letting the user know, hey, that key wasn't there, but we avoided the error. First, you looked at the dictionary to see if the email key existed before leaping by trying to access it. And that's LBYL. Let's see if this works. And there you go. Key not found, error avoided. And just like that, you used conditional logic in just a few extra lines of code to avoid a potentially application breaking error. Well done. Next up, you'll dive into the alternative style, EAFP. So now we come to EAFP, easier to ask forgiveness than permission. What exactly is that? It's a common phrase. If you are now or have ever been a teenager, 
I'm sure it's familiar to you, at least in concept. Basically, you're going to go out and do what you want, throw caution to the wind, and if you make mistakes, that is, if you encounter an error, you'll handle it after it happens. Another way to put that would be, if you get caught sneaking out after curfew, you better hope you have forgiving parents. So how does this apply to code? With EAFP, we'll be handling errors when they occur. You'll do this using the Python try accept syntax, which allows you to catch an error after it happens. To apply EAFP well, you'll have to identify the actions that you may take that may cause errors. Now let's go back to the REPL for another example. First things first, start up the Python REPL. Once again, create a dictionary. For consistency's sake, I'm going to use the same key value pair as in the previous video. And what can I say? I like my name. It doesn't really matter much, as the main purpose of this dictionary is to produce an error. Now that you've got your dictionary, you can imagine that some time passes, maybe you get a call from a friend, and when you come back, you don't quite recall exactly what was in the dictionary, and you try to access a key email that doesn't exist. And as you should expect by now, this causes an error. Because the key email is not present in the dictionary, Python raises a key error. So how can you take care of this or handle this error using EAFP? You're going to use try accept. So first, in the try block, you contain any of the code that could potentially raise an error. In this case, trying to assign the value of the dictionary key email to a variable. In case a key error is raised, the accept will be triggered. And if the accept is triggered, the print function will print out a message letting you know that the error was raised, but was also handled. Let's see if this works. There you go. Because a key error was raised, our error was handled by our accept block. And in that way, you just used EAFP to handle an error instead of avoiding it. So I know I've mentioned that the try accept Python syntax, as well as EAFP as a style, is not something that's available in all programming languages. So this might lead you to wonder, is EAFP itself more Pythonic? Well, as an answer, I'll start with a quote from Guido Van Rossum, the creator of the Python programming language. I disagree with the position that EAFP is better than LBYL or generally recommended by Python. The way I see it, it depends. Some situations call for EAFP, while others merit the use of LBYL. There's no such thing as one coding style to rule them all. So where does that leave us? Well, in the words of Leonardo DiCaprio, we have to go deeper. Over the next few lessons, we'll see some cases where EAFP dominates, some things that you really need to watch out for when using EAFP, and then finally, we'll have a comparison with guidelines to help you make the right call for a given situation.